Okay, this is the uh, the first Kefo vision for year 10, so so girls were um, breaking new ground here. You've just finished watching The Boy in a Striped Pajamas, which uh, is very, very loosely based on the Nazi Holocaust. Now, to put a little bit of context and to put a little flesh on those bones, I'll try and take about two, three. It'll probably drag on to four because I'm not very good at editing this sort of stuff, so it just goes a uh, minute or so. Um, we'll talk about why the Jews were hated anyway across um, European society at this time in the 1930s. Um, and, and just remind you that, remember, they were identified as the killers of Jesus um, from back in the days of the Bible. Um, and secondly, a lot of Jews had had very successful businesses, banking businesses with lots of money, um, and, and consequently people were just envious of them, they were jealous. It was good old-fashioned jealousy. Um, so the idea that they were um, they were wealthy beyond their number, if you like, beyond the proportion of um, of Jews that there were around, those that were about were rich. So at a time of depression, at a time of unemployment, at a time of burning money to keep warm and all that we saw, those Jews who had money had got it secure and got it in banks and they got it in gold or diamonds or musical instruments or fur coats, they lived this really lavish, ostentatious lifestyle in some cases. In other cases, they were just careful. Either way, a lot of German people could be manipulated by propaganda to really, really dislike them. And that was really the secret of, of, of Hitler's Nazism. He wanted to create this idea that Jewish people were subhuman. The word in German is Untermensch, subhuman. That they were, they were almost likened to sewer rats, um, germs and diseases and that kind of thing were associated and identified as being Jewish. So when he came to power in 1933 and mentioned this the other day, Initially and immediately, he organized a Nazi boycott of all Jewish shops, just to see how likely the German people were going to be to follow his anti-Semitic ideas. And they were up for it. They agreed. They boycotted the shops. So by 1935, a couple of years later, Jewish people were basically um, stripped of their Nazi, um, uh, their, their German citizenship. Um, any Jew that had fought in World War I and died for Germany in World War I had their grave dug up. It, uh, they didn't, Hitler didn't want any Jews to be identified as heroes of Germany. Germany didn't want to be a, a country that needed Jews in any way to contribute to it. So the demonization process was really clear. So by the time of their citizenship was being stripped, they could also, um, were not allowed to marry German people. They were not allowed in to German parks and public gardens. By the time of the war, they weren't even allowed to walk on the pavement, the sidewalk. They had to walk in the gutters. That was the creation of, 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 of this anti-Semitism anti uh, uh, and what Hitler wanted Germans to think of Jewish people. By 1938, they're having their synagogues, their churches and their shops smashed into the night of broken glass, it's called Kristallnacht in Germany, when basically the government encouraged people to go out and smash up any Jewish shops. It, it was awful. Um, and they had no recourse, they had no comeback, and they kept thinking, man, it can't get any worse, but it did. So when the war breaks out, the Nazi, Nazi German army, the Wehrmacht, they start capturing land to the east towards Russia, in Poland. That is when we get towards the time when the, the processes against the Jews become worse, leading eventually to the Holocaust. And it's been a gradual release of, of anti-Semitic policy. So by the time the Jews in, in Poland and Lithuania and Latvia and Estonia are captured within the German Reich, in the German Empire, successful in the war, these Jews start getting shot often by the Nazis, but just as often by the locals. The Nazis use the local people because they know that they hate the Jews as well. So the, initially these, these, these shootings, these massacres take place and the bodies are, are, are buried, sometimes burned, but just usually buried in pits. There's a good example of a place called Babi Yar, 
I'll try and find some pictures of that. Um, and these, these, in the in, in in the views of the Germans and the soldiers, um, Hitler realizes that the German soldiers find this a really traumatic way of executing men, women, and children, and soldiers don't want to do this. Um, so he he decides to try and pursue another course of action. So he holds a meeting at, at, at something called the Vansi Conference in Berlin, when they recognize that all these Jews are in, in, in these kind of ghetto communities in, in Warsaw, in um, Lublin, in various towns across Europe where the Jews have been penned in. So he knows where they are. And in order to make a final solution, he arranges for the Jews to be transported from these ghetto communities where they've been um, penned and crammed in and often with lacks of lack of rations and food. Um, so there's already starting to die away from natural exhaustion and natural wastage and, and forced labor. He then transports them to these new camps that he builds at Auschwitz-Birkenau, at Treblinka, at, at, at Chelmo, various places, always in Poland, where the Jews get transported to and they arrive and generally speaking 90% of those Jews who are transported to these death camps are executed in the gas chambers on the day of their arrival. They were told they were going to be resettled to something better, something further to the east. That's what they've been promised, that's what they've been told, but the reality very very different. They end up um, not repatriated, they end up in the death camps where the gas cylinders, the Zyklon B gas is dropped into these shower rooms, which of course aren't shower rooms, that the, the gas is released and therefore the Jews end up dying the most awful of deaths before they're being taken across to the crematorium. And, and you see that the boy in stri striped pajamas, you see the sky filled with this black ash cloud of, 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 of human, um, human remains, I guess, which have been cremated. Um, and it's only at the very end of the war when the Russians and the British and the Americans converge on Germany um, that they, they really discover the full horror of, of what's happened to the Jewish people. Um, there are some people who kind of think that maybe they knew a little bit earlier but didn't do anything, didn't do enough. It's probably true, but we don't need to really learn that for this assessment in any way. But I just wanted to give you, and it's turned into, what, seven and a half minutes, eight minutes, a little bit of an overview. But this, if you watch this carefully and listen to what I've said here, a lot of the boy in the striped pyjamas will make sense. Have a look also, Schindler's List, great movie. The Pianist, a great movie. It, the Pianist especially because it looks at how some Jews in Warsaw actually fought back. So have a think about increasing your knowledge through movies um, and obviously from this ask any questions or clarification for your understanding that you want to have a, have a, a second a second go at. Um, I hope this helps. Like I said, it's the first time I've done one for year 10. Sorry it's drifted on so long. Um, and if you have stayed till the end, well done. All right, see you in class.